Alex Littlejohn. Alex is the Associate State Director, the Nature Conservancy. And uh, good morning, sir. How are you? I'm trying to figure out what I can do with $161 million. Well, you can take the cash option. It's 116.1, I think it is. I think me, you, and Perez can split that three ways, and we still well, be okay. Then we got to pay Uncle Sam his uh, his portion. That's of okay. Still, we'll still take it. I'm willing to pay my fair share. Hey, look, if I if we if we just come out of this with two, five or six million apiece, man, I'm good to go. It's uh-huh. a little, make it, it it makes tomorrow a little bit brighter. That's yes. okay. Yeah, I think we I think we can make yeah. it, Perez. Speaking of which, planning for the future, uh, give us what we're talking about. Number one is, uh, from as far as the Nature Conservancy is, is concerned, the, the, for people who didn't, I'm trying to regroup here, people who have no idea what we're talking about. We had a bill last year that was uh, working its way through the 2021 session. And the bill would basically say this, look, we have so many amenities in the state of Mississippi. We have so many great assets, but they're underfunded from state parks to uh, availabilities for bike trails to uh, duck hunting lands that could be used, et cetera, et cetera. If we could just have more money that's earmarked for that, we could take these amenities and and move them up to first class and, and more utilize, but we have to have some dedicated dollars. Every year going to the legislature and the legislative process has not been the working model that it should be. You have to beg, scratch, and everything else and never get it. So, and stop me if I'm wrong on this one. No, you, so the idea never... was this. Let's just take some of the tax dollars that are... Uh, they're from um, sporting goods items, certain things on this list, almost like the back-to-school list, certain things on that list, and uh, that money, not not any more percentage, it'll be still the 7%, but a certain portion of that would go to this trust fund. And then there would be a board, well represented across the state, would come in every year and said, okay, we have some dollars, uh, and those dollars will go to this. Is that a pretty overview? No, you nailed it. It's it's exactly what we had proposed in House Bill 1231 uh, last this past session, and those, that effort was was passed out of the House. And kudos to Speaker Gunn and Representatives Kincaid and Lamar and Bounds, mm-hmm. and they really championed it and nearly passed un- unanimously. It went 117 to two, I think, and it made it to the Senate side. And <clears throat> they had some issues, some serious issues with it. Made some some critical changes to the bill bill ends up getting triple referred which is a very uh, that's an anomaly you know in terms of of what happens in legislative sessions ends up coming out of committee uh critically altered to a point that it really was not even the same of the bill that passed out of the house so there was obviously once they made it to conference uh, they couldn't agree to terms so that's that's what happened, and and and, the, and essentially the bill died in, in reflection. The lieutenant governor on the air with me, Alex, had, had, had mentioned this more than once. One of the problems was the private sector of this. Some of the money going to the private sector. Let's just say a landowner sure. uh, up in the Delta area who would maybe get uh, a certain amount of money from the board to enhance duck hunting. Well, it's and, and that was uh, I think the lieutenant governor's major problem with that. Yeah, and and you got to understand Mississippi's nearly ninety percent privately held and conservation that really moves the needle uh, in terms of wildlife habitat or whatever it may be, water quality, water quantity. Um, you just you've got to invest in pri- in conservation on private lands. And look, mm-hmm. um, Florida just announced Governor DeSantis just signed with my colleagues on a nature conservancy preserve in Florida at the Disney Wildlife Preserve that we have down there. They just announced they're going to make a $400 million investment in conservation strictly on private lands in Florida. So this is not something, on you know, com- investing in conservation on private lands is not something unusual. Mm-hmm. And states with... Um, similar political leanings as Mississippi, as, as we are here in Mississippi, um, are making these investments uh, already, and they've been making it in the last six months. And $400 million is a far cry from just yeah. the 15 we were trying to get in the legislation. So I guess we do need to mention the, the bill that you guys fashioned was uh, copied for the most part. It's the same as maybe Florida or some of the other states. Yeah, very similar to, to really identical to, to Georgia, but very similar model that we've mm-hmm. seen across the southeast in terms of um, directing a portion of sales tax associated with sporting good items, whatever that may be, 
towards a, a dedicated conservation trust. Now, you guys also had a cap on this. Was was, uh, was it a million dollars or two no, million? We, I forgot what it we was. We were going to cap it at 15. 15 million. And the dollars. fund over time could could hold no more than 20. Mm-hmm. And that just is a matter of making sure we get those funds out to where they're supposed to go, whether it's a new city park in Tupelo or Natchez or anywhere in the state, yeah. um, private land conservation or, you know, wherever it may be. Across. Does everybody else do it with a board in, in the same schematic or the same template? To some degree, yes. Um, so a, a little bit of an oversight so that you've got some some direction and uh, some account uh, definitely need some accountability, a lot of accountability on the yeah. funds. But yeah, it's 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 a model that we we didn't just pull it out of thin air. It's being utilized across the U.S. So you, uh, I, I guess even the, even the first year it's going to be mute because you wouldn't have any money in there. It has to you have to raise that amount of money. So the first year is just a working model for the most part, isn't it? That's right. Um, but Georgia. The, the beauty of, of dedicating state money is the ability to then leverage it against federal money that's mm-hmm. available. And Georgia, right out of the gate, turned 20 and leveraged an additional 70, 75. So they were almost working with $100 million on a $20 million state investment. So that $400 million, they, the, that new deal they just cut, is not all state money from, the, from no, their now, conservancy? In Florida, that is a $400 million deal. Uh, an investment there that can be leveraged, and they will probably they will probably wow. double that, if not triple it. So th- you'll be talking about almost a billion dollars in Florida. What do you think some of the major needs are here, though? We talked about the state parks; uh, uh, they're in in ill repair. They need to be. There's millions of dollars that need to go to that. Um, everybody's looking for bike trails and things such as that. Parks, more hunting land. Uh, what do you think the major concerns are, the major needs are in this state? Well, you just you just hit them. You know, Mississippi's blessed with an abundance of natural resources, but we've got to take care of those, whether it's new city parks, new biking trails, new water trails, new hunting opportunities, um, helping private landowners that can't otherwise afford uh, the full scale of land management on their property, all the way to state parks. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've got to take care of these. I mean, people are... We saw this during the pandemic. If you look at the numbers across the southeast, people left Mississippi to go to an adjacent state state park or they went to an adjacent state to recreate. So we've got every bit of that here in Mississippi. We can provide those opportunities, but we're losing them. And every year we're behind the eight balls every year that Mississippi's not at the table. And uh, we're losing out on federal money, too. One of the things that the lieutenant governor has said is the was it the Pittman of uh, I forgot the full Pittman name. Robertson Pittman Robertson That's right. uh, explain that number one because he said there are uh, dollars available through that. Well, those le- those dollars are getting leveraged, but they're getting leveraged strictly for land acquisition inside mm-hmm. the state um, the state wildlife department. Our effort is aimed at more of a holistic statewide effort where a city and community that otherwise wouldn't have the ability to enhance the quality of life for a biking trail or a new walking trail, a new yep. city park, um, they can then come to this fund and say, hey, we want to we want to apply and put in for a grant, which they can even take, you know, say the, the project was going to be a million dollars, they can ask a half a million from this okay. trust so and leverage they, if, it. If you've got the money, then you can go shopping for the match That's right. somewhere around. That's right. Uh, I want to ask you when we come back, what's happening now, the status on the ground, so to speak, from the deer blind or the duck blind, uh, as far as you guys meeting, uh, do you Absolutely. have something drawn up and all of that? When we get back, Alex Littlejohn. Alex Littlejohn, Associate Director of the Nature Conservancy. One note here, HB 1231 was my bill, Scott Bounds. Uh, alerts this morning, and he says, I fully intend to bring it back in the 2022 session. Uh, <laughs> word on text uh, into the program from uh, Representative uh, Scott Bounds. So I, I think the cohesiveness is there. It's it's just everybody get on the same talking page before right. uh, we get to the 2022 session. It, there's no chance this will be brought up, uh, I'm sure, in the special session, if there was a special session. So it, it's probably going to have to wait for uh, January. That's right, and we're going. I mean, as as Scott just said, we're coming back. You know, yeah. we're going to take another swing at it. We think it's a, it's we think it's great policy, great legislation for the state of Mississippi, and um, I mean, we're fully endorsed behind it, and we're coming back. So it it will not cost taxpayers, sportsmen, any more money. It's the money yeah. that you're already spending, uh, whether you buy a gun, shells, whatever it happens to be, anything sports related. It's just some of that seven percent. How much of that goes? Was it two percent or? 
Yeah, we were looking for half of it, so we had capped it at 15 million. The Department of Revenue talks about between 30 and 40 yeah. million of that money is associated with the sales of sporting goods items. So the amount of money that comes in is variable. It depends on sales. As That's far right. As sales it tax does. Is concerned. It does. Uh, what else do you want them to know? Well, just know that you know this is not something that again is uncommon. You know, it's 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 a bit frustrating that we're another year behind because mm-hmm. our our neighboring states this past year have increased their investments in this same area. Alabama has put another $60 million into the outdoor spaces. Florida, as we just discussed, um, you know, invested another $400 million in private lands conservation. The, um, the legislature in North Carolina, you know, my colleagues up there, they're negotiating 350 to $500 million increase over two years um, just because of the way their, their sessions are set up. So it's frustrating to see us another year behind, yeah. but I am I am very optimistic that this young man beside me, uh, my boy, is going to wake up one day and we will have a dedicated conservation trust. You better because he's he's rather a very he's very very <laughs> vocal by the way. He's he's real shy. He's yeah. real shy. Paul. He's 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 a shy guy. Hudson, good morning. How are you, sir? Good. Good. I'm good today. So my, my, I heard that you were pretty good. Uh, get up a little bit closer to the microphone. I heard you were a pretty good duck hunter. Yes, uh, I did. I am a pretty good duck hunter. You, would you like me to tell you about my favorite time we went duck hunting? Yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. My we, favorite time we went duck hunting was I got to meet some new friends, but mm-hmm. we got, we woke up real early in the morning to get out there. So we... We wrote, so we drove in side by sides to get a bo- get um, boats, go to the river, get in the ri- get in the river with the boats, ride to the blind, mm-hmm. and then we waited there. But two of the boys, including me, were bouncing around, making so much noise, no ducks ever came. <laughs> <laughs> was imagine was. that. Was it was it cold? Pretty cold. Pretty cold. So, uh, how many ducks that did you, have you shot a lot? I mean, do you are you a pretty good shooter? I. So I we have, shot a, we shot a few ducks with pot last year. I shot we? a few ducks before. What was your first? How old were you? You're nine years old. So how old were you when you got your first duck? I was a, probably about seven. Seven years old. That's pretty good. Pretty good. So are you worried about maybe what's going to be held for you in Mississippi in the in the future? You think this is a good move that your dad and others are doing? Yes, I really think we should um conserve our lands for the food that they um hold, hold for us mm-hmm. so other people can eat and um have the food they need to live, be able to talk with others, have a good family time, be able to have a good thing and be able to celebrate some good like big meals or something, like maybe a family tradition. They like to celebrate it, like have a big meal at the end of the day. A lot of memories around a campfire, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. You got a good guy here. Got a good guy. Thank you, Hudson. I appreciate it. Well spoken. <laughs> to wrap this thing up here, to uh, look at the 2022 session, you said that there are meetings or there's a lot of talking going yeah, on. Yeah, we're, we're actively talking to. Are, are the same things, the stumbling blocks that we had uh, nothing has been achieved as far as the private public sector debate. Yeah, the only thing we, we can showcase there is what's going on in neighboring states with mm-hmm. similar political dynamics at play as same as Mississippi. So we can just bring forward what's being passed in other states, but also show how that increase yeah. is showing a return on that investment. At, at one point, there were some, I guess, in the Senate throwing this out. Well, we'll just allocate a certain amount of money per year, and you guys can do, do that. Um, that could change in any given year. We understand that. It was, it was just something that was a non-starter for you folks. As that's right. The because a, a fair amount of this, especially with the Outdoor Coalition that's come together to coalesce behind this piece of legislation, is you've got to have the ability to plan out, especially when we're talking about leveraging federal dollars. Mm-hmm. Because today we may understand in two years that a, a certain pot of funds from the federal level is coming We've got to know what we have in the state available to go ahead and be prepared. So when that fastball comes down the plate, we can be ready to swing and yep. hit it out of the park. I mean, it's just a matter of – You're almost looking sir. sometimes uh, a year or two years ahead. You have to because anytime you use words like RFP or grants or things such as that, <laughs> it's not going to happen overnight. You, 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 you've that's got right. a plan for that. That's right. And, and anything that's not truly dedicated um, really offers up a lot of um, – 
there's no certainty in that when it comes to being able to plan. I do worry sometimes about the availability of land for hunting. Fishing is a different animal in the state of Mississippi. We have the reservoirs and things such as that. But on hunting lands, uh, we, we need more, to be honest with you, because uh, I think we have less and less people participating as far as hunting is concerned in our state. Yeah, the one thing we saw during COVID, and you saw this play out um, across the U.S., actually, was that some of those trends that we saw where people weren't utilizing uh, public lands or private lands for camping or outdoor recreation, yeah. that was turned on its head during COVID because people flocked to it left and right. And anybody watching yeah. boat sales, RV sales, campground sales, and unfortunately, um, you know, they were doing it in other states and not uh, and not in Mississippi. Campers went crazy. They went nuts. And uh, people got together and uh, just some some of them hadn't done it since their childhood. That said, the negative part of that is when we really begin to hear early on, probably two or three months within uh, the confines of COVID, we start hearing in the spring after March, April, May, June, we start hearing about uh, how dilapidated and started getting complaints as far as the state parks. Because to be honest with you, there were people who had probably gone to the state parks as, as parents and grandparents in a while. Yeah, and they were they were dismayed about the conditions. Yeah, you know, and this this particular piece of legislation, it would help with the state part issue, but it's not limited to just oh, the state parts that. issue. But yeah. absolutely, I mean, look, we've got we've got a very um, unique opportunity, given our unique assets in Mississippi, to not only increase the quality of life, but provide a place yeah. for folks like this young man next to me, that's my little boy, to bring their family hey, in. Hey, look, unfold. I want to ask you while I got you on here. I was reading something. I didn't bring it in with me about uh, the, I don't know if you guys are, the t -t 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 Audubon Society. Mm -hmm. Did you read that where they are coalescing that now there will be a Gulf South or uh, a, a Audubon Society? They're taking several of those organizations, putting them together? Yeah, I, I've read a little bit of that. Have some, you know, we've got relationships with that organization yeah. as well, coalescing around three states. And People don't um, realize that, but bird watchers uh, are a big, big group of people across the country. It, it, it is a growing number of people. It is. And I will tell you, I spent some time in South Carolina with some colleagues up there a few months ago, and um, we were around a lot of people that were not from South Carolina. And ironically, a number of those people knew about the opportunities, bird watchers, knew about the opportunities in the South Delta yeah. and in the Pascagoula River. And so you're sitting there talking to a family from Connecticut, a family from Rhode Island, a family from Texas, and they're coming to Mississippi to bird watch in places. And it's yeah. like, look, you know, we've got something really unique. We need to take care of it. If you haven't been on the on the river, uh, and I spent a lot of time fishing the river and, 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 and hunting too, and uh, You'll see you'll see birds there you have never seen anywhere else. I know, I know. Uh, Rosette spoonbill. That is my that's my favorite one. That color to me yeah. should not exist. It's, it's in unbelievable. You, it is. You know, and, and to the untrained eye, you think you're seeing a flamingo or something. I, you, you really do. Uh, and they're right here in our backyard. Ibises. I mean, those are the things you're not going to see in other places. But that's why one of the things uh, somebody was talking about. It's been a long time ago. Uh, the windmills, the great place to be was on the Mississippi River because of the wind coming across. I said, man, you do that. It's a, it's a migratory flyway. <laughs> That's you, right. You're going to have fricassee or ch uh, chopped up birds all up and down the That's, area. I know. I that know. and also the bears at, 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 on the river. Man, that is a success story, is it that's, not? That's what it is. It's a conservation success story. And with the passage, successful passage of this legislation, we're going to see even more of it. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, Alex Paul. Littlejohn, Associate State Director of the Nature Conservancy and also the next generation well, well represented by Hudson. Hudson, thank you, sir. We.